Hey folks, Barnaby Dixon here. So I've made this really cool hand mechanism that fits to the end of my finger. And as you can see, every time I point that finger, the fingers of the puppet hand unfurl in just a really, really natural way. Uh, it works with cables. Well, you know, I don't need to tell you how it works because I actually made a video detailing it. So I hope you find it interesting. So after modeling the piece, it made sense strength-wise to print the piece in a flat position, but we do want to bend it into a closed fist. That way, when the cables are strung through the fingers, pulling on the cables would make the hand open, and that's the premise for the whole mechanism. I'm adding this Teflon tube now to reduce the friction of the cable mechanism, but we're adding these clips because the outside of the tubing is very slippery too, and we want the tube to stay in place. So I'm using very thin fishing lines so that that relatively thin Teflon tube can accommodate all of the five fingers. And I'm knotting the end so the cable doesn't slip through the fingertips as we pull it through. You can sometimes use heat to ball up the end, but I find with very thin line like this, you do risk crystallizing it and then the ends can break off. What's nice about it is that it it's a very even unfurl, you see? It's not like this happens, then that happens, then this happens. It all moves very smoothly. I'm really happy with that but I did run into another issue. Whilst it's easy to move one of them individually, the width of the flexible part of the fingers is just, I think, a little bit too thick and it all accumulates. So when you start to pull more than two, it's actually quite kind of a yank. And that might be somewhat difficult if I have it on the little finger, for example. I don't know if it has the strength. So these small flexible segments within each finger, I think we're gonna to have to make them a little bit thinner. So I reprinted the model with slightly thinner segments between each of the finger parts and repeated the assembly process. This will seem like a segue, but do you guys remember in GTA 3 or The Sims, one of these games, on a PC, you could open up the game files and see the skins of the character, basically the clothing and the tonal differences that imply texture. And these were always really derpy, funny <laughs> looking images because they weren't actually designed to be viewed in two dimensions. They were designed to wrap around a 3D model to create something biologically accurate. I'm doing something similar here because the hand, you'll notice the thumb sticks out quite far because this is a flat object that essentially is going to wrap around the tip of my three-dimensional finger and look a little bit more right just anatomically. So that was something I was thinking about when I was designing it. I then added the upper segment of the mechanism and anchored all the cables off. The result was good, but not great, and here's why. So this one functions very well, but as you can see, the unfurled position has the fingers and thumb kind of aiming in one direction. It's not like a nice spread like this. And I think the spread is what I'd be going for, honestly. And if that means exaggerating the thumb to bend it back further than thumbs would naturally go, then I was willing to do that. I'm crazy. So I slightly remodeled, reprinted and reassembled. And thankfully the third time did prove to be the charm. If you've been following my channel for a while, you probably have a sense of how this concept could improve some of my existing projects like the bug or the Manu puppet. They do have their own hands, but this is just so realistic. So if you'd like to see experimentations like that, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to support projects like this, here is a link to my Patreon. Many thanks in advance. Uh, I do very much appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.